My name is Edward Zhang. This video introduces a new concept called directional changes. I shall explain why it is a useful concept for studying price movements in financial markets. History is recorded by key events. For example, when we described the development of currencies in the last century, we report when they untied with gold, when they floated against each other, etc. We don't take snapshots at fixed intervals. We don't report the situations at the end of every year and every 10 years. Yet, when we describe price movements in financial markets, we tend to use snapshots taken at fixed intervals. First, we decide how often we sample the data. Then, we take snapshots at the frequency that we have chosen. These snapshots form an interval-based summary. For example, end-of-day prices are frequently used. Why? Because we know how to handle time series with fixed intervals. We don't have as much experience and as many tools for handling samples taken at irregular intervals. Snapshots omit details. Unfortunately, some of the details omitted could be significant. For example, if we only record end-of-day prices, we could miss the price fluctuations during the day. In the example shown, the price dropped significantly below the few snapshots taken. They also fluctuated frantically there. These are not captured by our interval-based summary. This motivated Richard Olsen to invent a new way of summarizing price movements. The new measure should capture significant changes in price movements. It should also be scalable, as what is significant to one observer may not be significant to another. Olsen invented the concept of directional changes. A directional change is defined by a threshold that the observer cares about, for example 5%. Suppose we want to summarize the series shown here with 5% directional changes. We look for extreme points from which price dropped or rose by 5% or more. Here is a point from which price dropped by 5%. We say that a directional change event took place from the extreme point to the point where price dropped by 5%. Here is a point from which price rose by 5%. There, an upturn directional change occurred. From the end of the previous directional change to the beginning of the current directional change, we say that an overshoot event has taken place. A downturn directional change occurred here after a long overshoot. An upturn directional change occurred here. This time, the overshoot was extremely short before the next downturn directional change took place. I have recorded a longer video to explain directional changes in greater detail. To recap, a 5% directional change is basically a price change of 5% from the last peak or bottom price. We say that the market was in an upward trend from the bottom price to the next peak. It comprises a directional change event followed by an overshoot event. Similarly, the market was in a downward trend from a peak to the next bottom price. Under a directional change based summary, the market alternates between upward and downward trends. What we see here is a 5% directional change summary. We would get a different summary when we use a different threshold. Why is it useful to look at directional changes? Suppose we summarize the price movements with the same number of points in an interval-based summary and a directional change-based summary. 
by definition, the latter will capture all the extreme points. It will also use more points to summarize periods in which more directional changes took place, whereas interval-based summaries will sample prices uniformly over the period. A directional change-based summary links up extreme points. By using the same number of points, a directional change-based summary tends to have a longer coastline than the interval-based summary. What does it mean? It means that, given perfect foresight, a trader that uses directional change-based summaries would be able to make more money than a trader who uses interval-based summaries. In this example, an interval-based trader with perfect foresight will be able to make a return of 171%. A directional change-based trader with perfect foresight will be able to make 304%. Obviously, no one has perfect foresight, but this analysis shows that Investing resources in directional change research has higher potential than interval-based research, not to mention the fact that the latter is more crowded than the former. In all our observations, directional change-based summaries have longer coastlines than interval-based summaries. Based on the concept of directional changes, Olsen Limited has invested a lot of resources in building tools. Those with insight in directional changes will be able to benefit from these tools. Perhaps the most significant discovery in directional changes is in the scaling laws. Suppose we summarize price changes with a threshold theta. Suppose we observe that on average a directional change took t amount of time to complete. It was observed that a directional change of theta is followed by an overshoot of theta on average. Besides, the time it takes for overshoot to complete is 2 times t in average. These observations were only available under directional change-based summaries. We could design trading strategies around directional changes. Here is just one possibility. A trend follower would buy whenever an upturn directional change is confirmed and sell whenever the next downturn directional change is confirmed. This simple trend follower will probably not make money because on average, overshoot size is approximately the same as the directional change threshold. But could this statistical property help us find profitable strategies? Probably yes, because this regularity has not yet been exploited by traders in the market. That is, this regularity has yet to be reflected in the market. Why? Because directional changes are not widely understood yet. This is part of our current research. To conclude, when history is recorded, one does not report snapshots at fixed intervals. One records significant events whenever they come, yet most researchers record market price movements at fixed intervals. Unfortunately, significant events may not be captured by such snapshots. Richard Olsen defined a new concept called directional changes. A directional change is defined by a scale that the observer cares about. This new concept provides traders with new perspectives to price movements, as demonstrated by Ozen Limited in foreign exchange trading. It also enables researchers to discover new regularities in markets which cannot be captured by interval-based summaries. Such newly observed regularities give rise to new opportunities. As a new concept, directional changes open a rich research area waiting to be explored.